Hi friends, Caitlin here. I really just want to go ahead and dive in in this video because I've really been feeling in my spirit like I have something to say that's important. So this year, October 14th, is my 24th birthday. And my 24th birthday marks for me 10 years since I should have died. 10 years since I was going to commit suicide as a child. And 10 years since the Lord saved me from doing that. And with that being said, I just felt a really strong pull towards putting my story out there again for anyone that hasn't heard it, for anyone that might need to hear it, anyone that might need that encouragement, that life does get better. Because I came out of some really dark places. The Lord brought me out of some really hard things. And so I just wanted to share that today because I feel like there's some people out there that might need to hear it. So I'll just start at the beginning. I was raised by a Christian family. Um, I was homeschooled. My parents loved Jesus and my parents led worship and served the church and were godly, godly believers. My dad actually led me to Jesus when I was three years old. Um, we would have prayer time every night before bed. Me and my little sister would crawl up in bed with daddy and cuddle and we would each take turns praying and talking to Jesus. Those are some of my sweetest memories as a child. And my mom, when she was homeschooling us, she would read the Bible out loud to us every single morning. We went all the way through the Bible with all four of us kids several times. I don't even know how many times. So my home as a kid, I feel very privileged to say, was just inundated with the Holy Spirit, with the gospel. And I was blessed to have the gospel preached to me from an early age. So when I was three years old, my dad had already explained to me that God was good. He was a good father, that he loved me and he had a plan and a purpose for my life. He wanted to speak to me and that Satan was evil and he hated me and had it out for me and also had a plan and a purpose for my life to destroy me. So when I was three years old in one of those nighttime prayer moments with daddy, um, I said I wanted to give my life to Jesus, and so he showed me how to pray and how to talk to Jesus and surrender my life over to him. And so I chose to follow Christ at a very young age, which was such a foundational and life-changing decision that I did not even know at the time. I had no idea, but it put me on a certain trajectory. At five years old, I experienced sexual abuse from someone that I loved and trusted very much. I didn't know what was going on at the time, but I definitely protested. I said, mm, that's not supposed to happen. As a child, as a five-year-old, you don't know how to process these things. You know right from wrong, or at least I did. I knew what was right and what was wrong, but I didn't, I wasn't in control of this moment. I was not able to fully express my feelings or stop anything from happening or even tell anyone. So I honestly forgot about it and I buried that memory. And I have this photo of me and my little sister <laughs> in our brother's jacket on the living room floor. This was the age I believe that I was at the time. I think this was close to when I was five. But I even know like the time of year, the month, and it was October, it was after my birthday, I remember the birthday gift I'd gotten was a twin sized, not a twin sized bed, it was like an itty bitty kid's bed, but it was my own bed and I was so excited. Anyway, oh gosh, this is hard. This is, it's still hard to this day to do, but I really just feel like in my spirit, someone needs to hear it, so let's go. So I buried that memory, like the rest of my childhood, struggled with things that I couldn't understand because of that experience. Like I had a lot of panic attacks as a kid and I couldn't put into words what those were and my parents interpreted them as temper tantrums. So they just thought I was bad. <laughs> and I was a bad kid, I was the troubled child. But I was very fearful of a lot of things and I had a lot of anger, a lot of sadness, a lot of anxiety and fear that I could not put into words, did not understand, had no purpose for until I was 12 years old and I was starting to hit puberty. And my mom gave me one of those little books that was supposed to like explain stuff. <laughs> and I found this page in the book that said, if anyone has touched you here, you should tell an adult. <laughs> if anyone has done this thing to you or this, that's not right, you should tell an adult. And I got this sick feeling in my stomach that something was wrong, but I couldn't pinpoint it. 
and I just kept staring at that page. So I eventually felt bad enough, I just threw the book away, I put it away, um, and then I started having nightmares, remembering the things that had happened to me, and I started waking up in the middle of the night crying, hyperventilating, freaking out. Um, is this real? Is this fake? Is this a bad dream? And the more and more that I had them, it was like, okay, I remember this time of year, this location. I re like, I remember everything. <sighs> like, if I thought about it hard enough, I knew. Um, and so I, at that point, started thinking about the implications of it. And as a 12-year-old girl, you're realizing that, okay, this person that I love very much didn't value me. And so if they don't value me, then I must be worthless. I must not be valuable at all. And so that kind of tanked my self-confidence and self-love down the toilet <laughs> at that age. I was also in ballet classes wearing leotards and tights in front of a mirror looking at my body multiple days a week and just thinking, wow, I really hate myself. <laughs> wow, I really hate myself. And so somewhere before that, I believe I had found pornography on a different adult's computer and it got a hook in my brain. And so I was addicted to pornography from maybe age of eight or nine. And so when I hit that 12 year old mark and all those things started to resurface in my brain, that's what I turned to. And so I was in deep um, into pornography and it was just a mess. And I started to become so, so depressed. Just absolutely hate myself, have no energy at all, um, to the point where it interfered so badly with my schoolwork. Um, and in the seventh grade, I just failed algebra, and then I failed it every time I took it after that through uh, up until taking a GED class to graduate high school. It just took those important learning blocks out of my education because like, there were whole swaths of areas that I should have learned as a young child that I just did not. Um, and of course, I was homeschooled, like I mentioned at the beginning. So my mom, working a full-time job, also taking care of her parents, not knowing how to handle me. It was kind of a disaster. My sweet mother loved me so much, and I just was not, <laughs> was not a good kid at that time. So super depressed, um, super anxious, having panic attacks all the time that people thought were temper tantrums, so I was just really mean and really not fun to be around, having anger outbursts all the time. I think somewhere in the pornography addiction and just that whole feeling of not being valuable and being so lonely and not having anyone to talk to about this stuff. I had a best friend at the time who was a girl and I started to develop feelings for her. And I would have said at the time that I was bisexual. If, you, if anyone had ever asked me, I might have admitted that. Um, but it was so deep under the surface. I was dealing with all these issues. No one knew about it other than the outbursts, the emotional outbursts that would come out. But the real problems were all very hidden. But I was in love with her. I was infatuated, obsessed, and attracted to her. And it was really sad because um, I couldn't tell her. <laughs> Because she was dating all these other boys and talking to me all about it and I was friends with all them and so it was just really an emotionally trying time and I would have said that I was an atheist um, if anyone had ever really asked me, which of course they did not because I grew up in church, I was the piano player and the deacon's daughter and I was in the student band, I was already leading worship, but I, I thought God was not there. He just did not care about me. He was not real. Because in my head at the time, if God was so loving and all these things I'd been taught that he was, why would he let that happen, you know? I got to the point 13, 14 years old where I started having suicidal thoughts. At 14 years old, I had decided I was going to commit suicide. And I had already thought through all the ways to do it. I'd been thinking about it for quite a long time. Um, seriously, like... How could I do it in a way that, like, my mom's not going to find me, there's not going to be a mess in the house? Um, which I'm told is how females often think about suicide. Like, how can I make as little mess as possible? And I was literally about to do it. 
because I had this whole afternoon to myself um, where no one was really watching me. I thought I could sneak out anyway. I had already written the note. I had written the note. I was literally lacing up my shoes and I was gonna sneak out my bedroom window and I was gonna walk across the street and then down another street to a near water tower and I was gonna climb it and jump off. And I had seen where the ladder was. I knew where it was like, it wasn't super close to anyone's house. So I was gonna climb it and jump off. And I was very practical about it, very non-emotional. I was like, look, I'm just done. <laughs> Cause I'd already had all the emotions. I was sick and tired of the emotions and I was so numb for so long. And it's just like, I can't handle this anymore. So somehow before I was able to open that window to climb out, the Holy Spirit stopped me. When I say that, what I felt in the moment was, mm -hmm, maybe you should get on your knees and pray. And I was like, you know what? Okay, I don't think it's gonna do anything, but I may as well try to be right with God before this. Or <laughs> like, I don't, I'm not even sure what the logic was as much as just like, I may as well throw out a last Hail Mary, like I'll try, right? Like just in case, why not? Why not try? So I got down on my knees and before I could even form a thought to speak, I just started crying uncontrollably, just weeping. And I said, God, if you're there, if you're real, I need you right now. And I didn't even have to say anything else. His Holy Spirit met me in a tangible physical sense of his presence and at that time remember I didn't even believe he existed anymore but he met me right there and I can promise you it's not like there was music playing or there was lights going or like there was anyone telling me what to do or to think it was the Holy Spirit and he wrapped his arms around me and he told me everything's gonna be okay and that was all I needed. And I said, okay, Lord, okay. I'm gonna surrender my life to you again and I'm gonna mean it this time. That was the day that my life really changed. And I wish I could tell you that it's been perfect ever since, but I mean, it took me six months to gather up the courage to go talk to the nearest youth pastor that I trusted and tell him what was going on. Told my parents and that was really rough. <laughs> they didn't know how to handle that. Um, but they loved me. The moment that I told someone, it was like that weight just lifted off my shoulders. And I went out um, out of the youth pastor's office and down the hall into the room where the youth band was worshiping or they were practicing the songs. And I just lifted my hands in worship for the first time. And it was like I was able to really worship God and thank God for what he was doing. and. He was setting me free in that. He was giving me the love that I was missing. And that I could really have a relationship with him. I could really be free of that pain. And so that was the life-changing moment for me. Where the trajectory of my life went from, um, you're going to die. To, okay, you have a hope and a future. <laughs> you have a purpose and a calling and... You could do anything that you set your mind to through the power of the Holy Spirit. And you could live your life in a way that honors God. I was telling some friends the other day, I really didn't imagine that I would live this long. Like, to be at 24 is mind-blowing. And to look back and see all the things that God did in that time set me free of that addiction to pornography. And I mean, it took years. It was a fight. I mean, with the same sex attraction, like that was hard too, because that's something that we're so ingrained in our culture to believe is okay. Scripture just doesn't say that. And I've heard lots of different arguments, but, and I know this is a touchy subject, so I, would, I wanna err on the side of love. And um, for any of my friends that are gay, Obviously, you know I love you. If we've spent any time together, you are so important to me. And I'm not here to, to judge you, to fight you, to tell you that you're wrong. I just know that for me and my convictions, when I read the Bible, and I believe the Bible to be the Word of God, that if I am to continue walking in a loving relationship with my Creator, 
I have to abide by the things that he's spoken. When I read the Bible, it says that I'm supposed to live a certain way. Again, my heart is not to judge or condemn anyone um, in whatever lifestyle they've chosen to live. But this is just me saying that as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. So yeah, he really changed my mindset on that. And I can say now that I am married to a godly, incredible, patient, kind hunk of a man that I love with all my heart and I'm so attracted to. <laughs> and that's such a gift, such an incredible gift to say that like I can have a family one day. Um, we just bought our first house and we're in ministry together and life really gets better. <laughs> it really does. And so for anyone out there that is struggling, that is contemplating suicide, that has a plan, that thinks your life is worthless, you're so wrong. <laughs> and I tell you that in the most loving way possible. God loves you so much and he has such an incredible purpose for your life. Your life matters. You are so important in the eyes of a Heavenly Father. And you can always find people around you that will support you and that will love you no matter what. Oh, hold on. Getting really emotional. I gotta rein it in. But I just felt this so heavy on my heart today specifically that if you're running from the Lord, don't run anymore. Don't run anymore. The Father is ready. He's so ready to meet you with open arms and restore your life. Um, to heal the broken areas. If you'll repent of your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive, to purify, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I can tell you, you know, as an adult, I've struggled with panic disorders. I've struggled with um, depression. And who knows? Like, I haven't been psychiatrically treated, but I've gone to therapy and done meditation, medication. <laughs> Thank God for godly people in my life that told me um, I was way too wound up and I needed some drugs. But honestly, those things can help me live a functional life. But only Jesus can help me live a free life. Jesus is my way to heaven and he provides so many things to help me live a functional, healthy life on earth. Um, so obviously, I'm not going to sit here and keep... Praying for anxiety to go away if really I need to sit and take deep breaths and calm down and maybe take some drugs um, to help with the chemical imbalance. Um, bring back some serotonin. Sure, need that, definitely. But I'm also not going to treat a spiritual issue only in a physical way because that emptiness in my heart, that lack of value for myself, for my body and my mind, um, that lack of purpose in life, drugs can't fix that. Only Jesus can fix that. Jesus is the only one that can give you a hope and a future and a purpose and the love that you've been missing. So I just wanted to encourage you today that if you or a loved one is in a really dark place, there is hope that life does get better, that Jesus has so much in store for you and that your life is not worthless. You are not alone. Um, that God wants to restore everything that the enemy has taken from you. So thank you for listening and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch because I know that this was not short. <laughs> so I just hope that you can leave this video encouraged that your life matters and that there is hope and that you're not alone and Jesus loves you. <laughs> I know that may sound simple but like there's so much joy in, in knowing Jesus. There's so much joy and freedom in knowing your creator. Anyways, thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.